it was a real pleasure for me to be able to sit down with the designer of a revolutionary new pistol. Uh, it's been out since 2011, but it's been in the design work since 2003, and Arnie himself has actually been designing pistols since he was 14 years old. So you get to pick the brain of an engineer who uh, pulled himself up by his bootstraps and has now brought his dreams to fruition in this series of pistols. So take a little time with me, as I did with Arnie, to get to know him, uh, his design process, his manufacturing facility, and a little bit more about his new pistols. So Arnie, tell me about, uh, tell me about your passion for firearms and how you decided you wanted to design your own. Well, I built handguns as a kid. The primer gun, it uses a shotgun primer with a BB. The barrel is a cut off of a crossbow air rifle barrel. Hmm. And um, it will shoot the BB at, I'm guessing, around 2,000 feet per second. You were how old when you did this? I was 14. 14? Okay. Yeah, it's just made of wrought iron, uh, you know, band iron. Uh, everything was filed, a hacksaw, I had a vise, I had a drill press. So you're a mad scientist? Well, I don't know about being a scientist, but I just wanted to shoot guns. And I carved this out of a piece of walnut for my dad's lumber business. And uh, this is uh, uh, this metal on here is from a notebook. It's the spine of those ring binders. And that was a pretty good spring steel I can make stuff out of, so I made the rear sight out of that material and the screw on the top. The screw here tightens the barrel in place. This is a, considered a match grade trigger. It's very, very smooth. Actually, it's a right handed gun. Very, very soft. Pull. Fun stuff. I built about seven handguns when I was a kid. You didn't start from a, someone else's design, you started from the ground up. And that's exactly it. You know, in college, they did not teach me how to do design. That's yeah, it's uh, a talent. You have to know how to design. And then you need good mentors, and he was my mentor. His name is Leif Erickson. He's oh. had over 30 patents to his name, and uh, he's uh, still around, still a friend yeah. of mine. Is he Swedish? And uh, he's of Swedish descent. Yep. And you're Swedish descent? I'm Swedish okay, descent. I'm a Norwegian. We agreed before the yeah. shooting that we were going to get along for this. So, yep. uh, it's all Scandinavian, it's all firearms, so it's all good. And so I started thinking of how I could get an extra long barrel and a short gun, and that's when all the work started. Well, here's a barrel, and I actually had a feed mechanism that delivered it in. And I had a pair of tongs, oh. I snapped over, and pulled it up and lifted it in. The tongs aren't that much different today from when they were my original ones. Conceptually, they're about the same, except I have two different ones with a spring in between. Right. But that was the original concept. Original concept, yes. Uh, this was how I tested out the mechanism to see how the reverse feeding would work. Uh, but this thing was shot quite a bit just to prove out the mechanism. And from there, uh, I continued working on the 32 until Rohrbach came out with a 9, the smallest 9 millimeter. I realized that the market's going to 9 millimeter. This is one of your original prototypes. Yeah, this is a Gen 3. Okay. Yep. Uh, this gun cost about $15,000 of my own yeah. money and it didn't and work very well. it's staying here in the archives, just so you know. Yep. And at that point, I figured how many more generations is it going to take for me to make it work? I don't have that kind of cash. So I started, I got a Bridgeport mill, took it apart, got it down in my basement, and started making my own. But anyway, so I did some of the testing. You can see what this ballistic like. This is a CAR PM9, and this is a Bulberg XR9 uh, shooting the same type of ammo. This is a Baltic Birch. This happened to be Hurtenberger Plus P Plus, which is probably the hottest uh, ball ammo you can find. You can see it penetrates, you know, roughly four inches to this uh, Baltic Birch bullet. Well, I do know you can shoot Plus P rounds through the through your pistol. Yep, yep, it's rated for that. Yeah, we opened our doors in March 2009, but it was a long, protracted startup. We did, uh, a couple of years of uh, just building our manufacturing facility here and getting everything ready for production. We didn't start producing until um, June of 2011. We didn't start shipping until September of 2011. Okay. Yeah, and I spent over 20 years in manufacturing and distribution, so I understand startup and uh, how difficult that is, the investment that it takes, finding the right people, um, getting your processes under control. Um, people think that you just, to your point, just move out of your garage in the manufacturing facility and, and everything's up and running. That's far from the case. The frames are being here in Boulder Arms for our XR9 pistols. This is a frame for the XR9 Long. It starts out as a solid piece of 7075 T6 aluminum. Pretty hefty, but when we finish the machine it, it ends up being only 8% of the materials remaining. 92% goes into the recycling. When we machine it, we machine one half, that's the shape of the gun, we flip it over and machine away the other half, there's a lock, and we wind up with a solid piece like this from the vice operations. Then we switch over our tooling and then put it into a four axis where we cut out the centers and do all the other internal operations, including the magazine well, which is rounded, it can be done with cutters, there's no need for broaching. So that's the final frame. This half of the cost content in making these frames in 
involves material and the machining time. The other half is the manual operation. So going to hand deburring this, bead blasting it by hand, and all the packaging back and forth for uh, shipping, all the plating and, and packing, and obviously preparing for assembly. All our assembly operations, we're pressing pins in through our sub-assemblies here on these uh, arbor presses that have been modified for the purpose. Mm -hmm. And we're continually adding these as we uh, start uh, fixturing more and more things and as we come out with our XR45 series mm -hmm. of missiles, we're going to have to duplicate all this stuff for the mechanisms on those different parts. Rotating barrel lock breech. Extractor's fully locked closed. On the left side there's actually a uh, fixed extractor, so it's dual locking extractors. You never have a failure to extract with this firearm. It has the lowest felt recoil of any other gun this size. You got a full Full quarter inch of travel before the barrel and slide unlock, and it's all parallel travel. So with a hotter ammunition, you're going to be shooting at point of aim. You have a full inch and three quarter stroke, longest slide travel in the pocket class. That helps absorb recoil too. The fact that the barrel rotate also gives you uh, uh, less felt recoil. And the grip panel is actually flex. I don't know if you can see it. It forms a line there. It's like a trampoline in back. So when you're running the really hot loads, it actually absorbs a little bit more recoil and back. So the overall impression that our customers have is the gun is very, very soft shooting. Double action only trigger, repeat strike capability, nice even force. People love our triggers. Seven and a half pound mainspring is standard. We have a six pound option and a nine pound option. Takedown is pretty simple. Move the magazine, turn the takedown lever to 180 degrees the parts come off. Recoil spring comes out. Should last the life of the gun. If you pink one, we'll replace it for free. They're uh, very durable recoil springs. Unlock block comes off. We use actually and ICs to break the gun in, which is what rotates the barrel. There's a locking extractor here, uh, from both uh, dual extractors there, and this of course here's a tong. to grab the cartridge. Pulls it out of the magazine. Reassembly. Come back like this. Yep. That's your vice president's vice so. Yep. And here's the uh, uh, bolt hold open feature for the range. You can pull the trigger and close it. And that's essentially it. The XR9 Shorty 2 tall in our base model. Close for $995. It was my promise to the world. We're going to keep the price under $1,000 so you can always buy a Bobert for under $1,000. Pick a tinny rail and it has a full length barrel, 4.2 inches long. So you achieve the ballistics of a full size SIG 226 with this uh, small of a gun. Essentially, it's the same firearm from here on back, mm -hmm. but it also produces uh, less recoil than the uh, X-9 Shorty due to the fact it's got more massive components. But also, we have a mid recoil bumper in here that absorbs the energy of when the, the barrel stops and the slide continues. So it's the barrel recoil energy that is absorbed by these uh, curved beams in here. So basically this gun has one more element of recoil absorption than the Shorty has. And the Shorty Platinums. The satin sheen nickel chrome that's exclusive to the Gurn Shorty. This is our best selling model. People comment that we have impeccable fit and finish. This is the most powerful 9mm box pistol to run. It'll run plus B and some plus B plus with this gun. Okay. This is the fact that all the internal parts are case hardened. There's stainless underneath, but the case hardening is a knife fighting process called melanite, and it allows the gun to have extreme durability. Um, even though it's our most expensive gun at $1349 MSRP, people just love this gun. Why, however, it's not knife fighted due to cosmetic issues and having that come out looking even. Uh, that's a diamond kind of box, you know, diamond plating that we put on there, okay. including the hammer. Cool. Uh, so, that's our basic uh, extra nine. Arnie, right, thank you very much. Uh, it's an excellent, excellent pistol. I appreciate you taking the time and uh, wish you the best of luck. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.